Hi, sixth grade. Today we'll be talking about box and whisker plots. So let's go ahead and get started and find out what they are and how we can make them. Box and whisker plots are going to use a number line to show data distribution. And you've probably seen a box and whisker plot before. It's made up of several points on a graph a line graph, and those box, those points are connected with a box in the center and then two whiskers coming out to the side. So this is what your box and whisker plot is going to look like when you're done. Let's go ahead and talk about the parts of the box and whisker plot to get a better idea about what these points mean. All right, so there are several things that we're going to be able to tell from the box and whisker plot. First of all, the point in the very middle, this is going to be the median. We've talked about median before. It's going to be the middle of our set of numbers. So the point that's in the center of the box is the median. The points on either side, the far ends, here and here, are going to be the least value and then the greatest value in our number set. Okay, So between these two numbers is going to give us the range. Okay, Now we still have a couple of points on the box that we're going to need to talk about. This point on the lower end of the box is going to be called the lower quartile. Make sure you're labeling this on your note sheet. Well, if this is the lower quartile, then the one further up the number line is going to be the upper quartile. And we'll talk about what quartiles are in just a few minutes. Okay. The area between the upper and the lower quartile is called the interquartile range. I almost didn't give myself enough room there. The interquartile range. So between the two ends of the box is our interquartile range. Make sure you have this labeled on your note sheet, what each point means. And let's go ahead and talk about how we create a box plot. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to write our data in order from least to greatest. So let's go ahead and do that very quickly. I can see looking at my data that my lowest number is a 17. You know how I like to cross out. I have another 17, a 19. Oops. A 20, a 21, a 23, a 26, 28, and 29. So first step, write the data from least to greatest. We've got that step covered. Let's go on to step two. Our second step is to identify the least value the greatest value, the median, the lower and the upper quartiles. So let's start off with what we already know. We know the least and we know the greatest. That one's pretty simple. 17 is the least, 29 is the greatest. So we've got the least and the greatest identified. Let's identify the median now. Remember the median is your middle number. So we're going to count from the ends, 1, 2, 3, 4. The number in the middle is going to be the median. Okay. Now, remember, if we had two numbers in the middle, then we'd have to add them up and divide by 2 to find the average. But we don't. We only have 1, so we're just going to take the number in the middle. All right. Let's go on and find the lower 
quartile. To find the lower quartile, we're going to take all of the numbers that are less than the median, and we're going to find the median of those lower numbers. So the numbers that's in the middle of those lower numbers. Well, if I go, I find that there's two numbers in the middle. So I'm going to have to add them together. I'm going to have to divide by 2, and I'll get my lower quartile. I'm going to do the same thing for the upper quartile. I'm going to look at, let me change colors to make sure that we can tell them apart. I'm going to look at the numbers that are larger than my median. I'm going to count into the middle. I find that, again, I have two numbers in the middle. So I'm going to add those. And divide by 2. Gives me 27. And that's my upper quartile. That was the hard part. Now we just have to plot them on the line. Oops, I'm going to go back here and grab my data. Okay. So now I've got my data. I'm going to need to put that on the number line. Okay, so go ahead and draw my number line. My number line is going to have to go from 17 to 29. I think I'll go ahead and go from 15 to 30. Then I need to plot my numbers. So I'm going to plot first my upper, or I'm sorry, my greatest and my least values. Then I'll plot my median. Then I'll plot my lower quartile which was 18, and I'll plot my upper quartile, which was 27. Then I'm going to draw a box to connect this. So let's look at how we're going to draw our box. I'm going to start by connecting the lower and the upper quartile to the median. Then I'm going to put my whiskers that go out to the sides for the least and the greatest. So I've got my box, I've got my whiskers. This tells me where my median is, what my interquartile range is, remember that's your interquartile range, and then my least and greatest. So you try this one. Go ahead and pause. See if you can make a box and whisker plot for this one on your own. Okay, let's go ahead and check our answer. Your box and whisker plot should look very similar to this. Notice we identified the middle number. The median is 41. We've got the least, the greatest, in the lower and the upper quartile, and then, of course, we have the interquartile range. Okay. One thing that's very useful to do with box and whisker plots is to compare sets of data. So what I've done here is compare basketball player height to baseball player height. Now, you would probably guess that basketball player height is going to be greater, but we still want to get a comparison. Okay. 
So what you do when you want to compare two sets of data is you put two, one, two sets of data on the same number line. So we'll put one above the other. I've got the basketball players above the baseball players. You notice what I did there, orange for the basketball, green for the field. Tried to color code here. All right, so what can you tell when you compare the data? Let's look at the data and see if we can tell which has the greater median. Remember, median is the middle number, so if we look at our data points, we can tell that the basketball player height is going to have the greater median. So it's basketball. Which one has the greater interquartile range? Again, we're going to have basketball. The interquartile range is longer. It stretches across the number line more. So we're going to have basketball. Which one, though, has the greater predictability of height? When we talk about predictability, when we talk about which one um, you could guess more easily, it's going to be the one that has the smaller range. Because if we were to guess a basketball player's height based on this, we could be very wrong. So we're looking for the one for predictability that has the smaller range. So in that case, the smaller range is going to be the baseball player. Okay. That ends it for box and whisker plots. We'll work more on these in class. Have a great evening.